from this to this. Today on Vinyl Chef Steve, we're gonna show you how to make New York style pizza dough. From this side of whatever state you're in, I'm gonna show you how to make homemade pizza, New York style, from dough to sauce to bake. Hello everybody, Vinyl Chef Steve here. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make the best New York pizza in whatever state you might live in. And it's fairly simple. There are recipes out there for, uh, you know, hand kneading or even uh, Cuisinart food processors if you have one. But today we're going to do it with the trusty KitchenAid stand-up mixer with the dough hook attachment. A couple other things that you're going to need if you want to do this the best way possible is a pizza steel that I've found gets you the best crust on the bottom of the pizza. Um, and conducts the most even amount of heat. You'll also need a pizza peel, this little guy right here, to slide your pizza into the oven and remove your pizza from the oven. You're going to need a scale because all these measurements are um, in grams. So you'll have to get some sort of a digital scale. Uh, some sort of a storage bucket for your dough. You can use a bowl this size with saran wrap if you have to, um, but I found these really keep the dough nice and fresh and uh, moist. So you're gonna need to put your dough into the refrigerator for it, a minimum of overnight and up to as long as, I'm not kidding, seven to eight days, you can keep this dough in your refrigerator. It will just continue to ferment. It will develop uh, deeper flavors, Right around the fourth day, I get the best uh, crumb inside the crust. I get the best texture. It's got a slight chewiness to it. A little bit of that, you know, fermenting funk that you like for flavor. Um, and the crust crisps up really nice and it rises really well around the edges. So uh, four days for me, you can do anywhere from 12 hours, you know, to seven or eight days if you like. You're gonna need some tomato paste. You will need some type of sugar. Just, you know, this is baker sugar that I use. You'll need some kosher salt. When it comes to your sauce, you're gonna need a, a can of really good quality DOP San Marzano tomatoes. And uh, you wanna make sure that you have this DOP on there. That's that's a, an origin um, certification from Italy so that you make sure you're getting legit San Marzano tomatoes and not, you know, some other knockoff that just uses the name um, on their cans. These are some of the best tomatoes that I've, I've ever, ever used. Um, flour for your dough. This is double zero flour. Apparently, this is the best flour that you can use to make pizza dough, pasta, and a number of any other Italian things that require flour. So you'll need some of that. You're gonna need some seasonings. You'll need some garlic powder, some onion powder, some Italian seasoning. Um, and if you want it a little bit spicy, you can opt to put some uh, red chili flakes in your tomato sauce. I'm sorry, yeah, in your pizza sauce when you're cooking it. I'm gonna show you how to make the sauce as well. Um, some dried yeast. You'll need a pack of dried yeast. Make sure you um, check the code dates on these to make sure they're not expired. Otherwise, you will not get a rise out of your pizza dough. Some good quality olive oil. And then pepperoni of your choice. I like these... Uh, One's from Hormel. They are the they end up cupping when you cook them, so we like that as well. You don't have to put pepperoni. You can top this pizza with anything you like. You want to use whole milk mozzarella, not part skim. So make sure it says on the label whole milk mozzarella, low moisture. This stuff from uh, Galbani is dynamite. Great, great flavor, 
uh, it melts beautifully as well. So I think that's it. You'll need some water for this recipe too, but I didn't think I had to show you, show you that. You can get that from your, your sink or your refrigerator or bottled water, whatever you want to use. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, oh, last thing. You will need um, a cooling rack for when you take your pizza out of the oven. You want to set it on a cooling rack so that the crust stays nice and crisp and it doesn't steam if you take it out and put it right on, on your uh, countertop. Unless you're going to cut it immediately and serve it, then you can go ahead and do that. But you will risk burning the roof of your mouth. We'll go ahead and set ours on the cooling rack for a few minutes and then, uh, then we'll go ahead and slice it up. All the ingredients for this recipe will be in the description. So if I miss something or I don't say it correctly, just check it in the list of ingredients um, in the description and you'll be fine. All right, so here we go. And I forgot to mention that you can use all purpose flour if you choose to do so. Uh, but apparently the double zero works the best for pizza dough and pastas and, and other things. Um, so I opt to use that and so far it's produced amazing pizza crust. Make sure that when you measure out your ingredients that you zero out the scale when you switch from ingredient to ingredient. Otherwise you may just end up with pancake batter. It's happened. So we've got our 470 grams of double zero flour that's going to go right into our mixing bowl here and see how easy this really is. Put all your dry ingredients in first. We've got our 25 grams of sugar going in, our nine grams of kosher salt in there. Our half a teaspoon, this is a half teaspoon of dried yeast into the party. And then our 21 grams in weight of good olive oil going down in there too. The olive oil helps to give the crust a nice consistency, but also helps in browning when it's in the oven. So you get that nice golden brown crust and caramelization. And lastly, we're going to put in our 285 grams of ice water. Okay, there we go. All our ingredients are in and we're going to drop our dough hook, lock our KitchenAid in place and start slow. Otherwise you will have a dust bowl, a flour dust bowl in your kitchen. We're going to turn it on low just until the flour gets moistened from the water and uh, won't fly out of the mixing bowl anymore, which is about right now. So then you're going to kick your your uh, power up to about five and a half to six on your mixer, on your speed. And you're going to stand here for about six minutes. Set your timer. six to seven minutes and you want to hold on to this because otherwise it does it really does bounce around once the dough becomes more firm and it's kneading the dough it's whipping it around the bowl if you don't hold on to your mixer throughout this process you might find it in the living room by the time it's done so you want to definitely stand here and just lean on it and watch the magic happen the dough hook is grappling with the dough, slapping it around into submission, forcing it to make a beautiful crust. You can hear it slapping against the sides. Okay, looks like we're getting about there. The timer is going to go off in about 30 seconds. And then I'll show you what we got. There's the timer. And our dough is ready to bring out of here. So you can see it's pretty much nice and elastic. It's gonna come right off the hook here. 
definitely doesn't stick. And then we will go ahead and get it onto our working surface here. Just put a little bit of olive oil down on your working surface. And there's the dough, you can see it's in there. It should come right out. There it is. And we're gonna go ahead and just knead it a little bit. Get it into a nice little ball. Just turn it, kind of cut the edges. You're pushing underneath, folding underneath. You're gonna get a nice, soft, smooth little ball here of dough. There you go. Now we're gonna take this little guy that we had earlier. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in here. Put your hand in there and just spread it around bottom, on the sides. Just take your dough ball and drop it in. There you go. There she is. A beautiful ball of New York style pizza dough. Just waiting to mature. Put your lid on and this will go into the fridge and then we'll work on our sauce. For the best pizza sauce ever, start with one 28 ounce can of San Marzano tomatoes, preferably DOP certified. About two to three tablespoons of good quality tomato paste. One tablespoon of onion powder. About a quarter to a half a teaspoon red chili flakes, depending on how hot you like it. Two tablespoons of Italian seasoning, dried Italian seasoning one tablespoon of garlic powder, and one tablespoon of dried oregano. Lastly, but not leastly, one heaping tablespoon of sugar. Once your sauce is done cooking, you can salt it to taste or just leave it alone. It'd be up to you. So let's move on to this can of tomatoes. We're gonna open up these beautiful San Marzano tomatoes. Um, we're going to use the entire can, but we are not going to use the sauce. We're going to remove each and every tomato and put it in a saucepan um, where we'll proceed to puree that down with a immersion blender. If you don't have an immersion blender, you can use a regular blender um, or a food processor. Just be careful when you're pulling these tomatoes out of the can because there might be a little... Uh, metal piece of uh, spur or metal piece of shrapnel sticking out from where you ripped the lid of the can off. You don't want to cut yourself. So you can see how I'm taking these tomatoes out and uh, kind of shaking off the sauce. So we're just going to use the tomatoes here. So on to blending up our whole tomatoes. If you don't already own one, I highly suggest you invest in an immersion blender. Basically what it is, it's a handheld blender that you just immerse, submerge into. You can submerge it into cans, into jars, into bowls. Um, it's just so much easier to use for small jobs like this versus, you know, having to clean up a, a blender or a 10 piece, you know, um, food processor. But nevertheless, to get to this point, use whatever you have. So once we add all the ingredients, we will put the sauce on the stove for about five to eight minutes or until it starts to bubble and uh, like lava, as you'll see here shortly. So now we're adding our mm, roughly two to three tablespoons of really good tomato paste in there. And we're going to puree that in as well, just to get it mixed into the tomatoes really good and not to... Uh, leave any clumps of tomato paste. It doesn't take much, just a few pulses here. And then we'll continue adding our herbs and seasonings. So here we're gonna start with our um, 
dried Italian herbs are gonna go in. Grab a whisk and, you know, just whisk this stuff in. You don't wanna use the immersion blender during this process because it'll disintegrate all of your herbs and just will not make for a very good sauce. You want pieces of herb throughout your sauce. And so there goes the uh, oregano there, tablespoon of oregano. And just get this all moistened and kind of incorporated into the this, this nice, beautiful sauce we have going here. And now the remainder of the ingredients can go in all at once. You've got your garlic powder, which was one tablespoon, and a, a tablespoon of onion powder. That might have been the garlic powder second and the onion powder first. But anyways, you have the ingredients. There goes the sugar. That was the one tablespoon, heaping tablespoon. And then I think I put in like maybe a, a quarter of a tablespoon of chili flakes because we don't like it too hot. But you definitely get some spice from those chili flakes, especially once you start um, heating up the sauce. So we're going to just blend it all together with our whisk here. Get it nice and incorporated, and then we will take it to the stove. Set your flame to medium and stir your sauce with a spoon or whisk for the next five minutes until it comes up to a boil. Do not leave your sauce unattended because it rapidly turns into a boiling pot of hot pizza magma. So you will have a terrible cleanup after that, as you can see here. So once you're done, uh, with the five minutes of stirring your pizza sauce just set it aside and let it cool until you're ready to make your pizza my dough is done fermenting i let mine uh, ferment in the refrigerator for four days so this is the fourth day you don't have to do it for four days you can do it for uh eight to twelve hours um overnight or as long as eight days so what I'm going to do with this one here is I'm going to make pizza today. We're going to show you how to make the pizza and complete it. And I'm also going to save one of them uh, for a couple more days in the fridge. So I'll show you how to get it out of the container, split it in half, and prep it for the final proofing. So there's our dough. It's in there. It's been in the fridge for about four days. We're going to go ahead and peel it out of here. It should come out fairly easy there it is there it is a nice big blob of dough see how that looks so we'll just go ahead and set it on your work surface here and what we're going to do is we're going to take a bench scraper this is a great cutter and we're going to pretty much cut it right down the middle right down the center in a diagonal so we'll get two pieces of dough fairly accurate. Then we're just going to take these and just roll them into a ball. One. set this on a lightly floured I use a cake pan you can use a dish a bowl anything for that matter I'm just gonna set this in here cover it this is a cake tray works great for proofing and uh, just set it there and we're gonna let it ferment for one to two hours up to two hours outside of the fridge meanwhile we'll get this other ball going here we will just leave this in there this bowl here has been lightly greased with some olive oil. It will be ready to go the next time we want to make pizza. So just put that lid on, pop it in the fridge. At this point in time, you're going to want to grate your mozzarella cheese. So I usually use anywhere from six to eight ounces of mozzarella cheese on this pizza. You'll get maybe a 12 to 14 inch pizza depending on how thin you want to, you know, Roll it out. If you want a little bit thicker crust around the edges and dial it back a little bit, maybe to around, you know, 10, 11 inches. Um, but nevertheless, however you cook this dough, if you want traditional, 
uh, New York Pizzeria where it's a little more on the thinner side, then that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna try to make it a little bit on the thinner side. This, my friends, is an infrared thermometer. This is gonna measure the temperature of my pizza steel, which I'm hoping is at 550 or greater. Sometimes it does exceed, believe it or not, the temperature of the oven. And I opt to use the pizza steel over the pizza stone because the pizza steel tends to get hotter and crisp up the bottom of the pizza better. So let's have a look and see what the temperature is of our steel. We are at a blazing 560. So that's good. Let's get this pizza in the oven. All right, our dough has been fermenting outside for about two hours. So ideally the process here is you wanna have your oven preheated um, when this has reached the second hour of fermentation. So in order to do that, I usually, um, after the first hour of the dough fermenting outside in the last rise, I will turn on the oven and put it at as high as you can get your oven. Mine goes to 550 and I put my pizza steel in the oven to preheat it as well. It takes about 45 minutes to get the pizza steel to temperature to where I can confidently put this pizza on there and be sure that the crust is going to get a nice little brownie on there. So uh, I opt to use a thermometer as you saw and that tells me when the pizza steel is at the temperature that I would like it. The oven gets there faster than the steel. So we're going to go ahead and get our piece of dough out here on our work surface and make our pizza. You're going to want to have some flour handy to flour the lightly flour your working surface and also lightly flour your pizza peel. Okay, I'm going to grab our dough off here. Looks nice. Let's drop it in here. Out of the way. And drop it down on our work surface. Push it out. Work from the center outward to give your crust a nice little thickness if you like thicker crust on the ends. Once you get to a certain size, then you can pick it up. This is where you can stretch it with your hands big or as little as you like. Once we get it stretched out, and throw it on our pizza peel. And start putting on our toppings. Okay, start with our sauce, about a ladle full, just go all the way out almost to the edges, all right, got your cheese, much or as little as you like. Like I said, this is about eight ounces of cheese. And then we're gonna get our pepperonis on here. Again, as many or as little as you like. You don't have to put pepperoni at all if you don't like. Pepperonis tend to shrink up, so you can pile them on top of each other, put them really close, side by side, whatever you like. We're going to bake our pizza at 550 degrees convection 
for seven minutes. If you don't have a convection oven, as high as your oven will go for maybe nine to 11 minutes. Oh my, that looks delicious. Nice caramelized crust, beautifully melted cheese and perfectly cooked pepperonis, little crispy tops. It looks delicious. You can see we got a nice browning on the crust, the bottom, look at that. That's a good crust right there. I don't know if you saw that, did you? Yeah. And got some puffiness, not too puffy because it is New York style pizza, but there's a big puff ball right there, look at that. Nice cheese, oily pepperoni. Nice bubbles, almost looks like a wood fire pizza. Yeah, that came out nice. I'm gonna cut it right now. Here we go. Nice New York style pizzeria pizza. A nice crust on the back you can see nice and toasty hot see if you can even hear the the crunch try not to burn my mouth oh so i'll have another bite before we go this is vinyl chef steve signing off and thanking you for joining me again Yeah. That's good pie. And it does do the classic fold if you want to fold it over. Mmm.